Let's dive into a story of magic, laughter, and family connections that takes us back to 2013 with Jack the Giant Slayer. A young boy named Jack, living with his dad, finds comfort in a story about giants, a story his late mother loved. Our story begins long ago when monks, looking for a way to connect with the divine, find magical beings. But instead of connecting to the divine, they find Gantua, a world of scary giants hiding between earth and the sky. These giants were not just big. They attacked the earth, causing chaos and developing a scary liking for human meat. Isabel, a young princess, is also attracted to this story, hearing it from her mother. Even with the terrifying leader of the giants, Isabel is not scared. The monks, desperate to stop the giants, use dark magic to make a crown from the giants' hearts, allowing King Eric to control them and send them away to Gantua, making peace. Fast forward to bedtime in Jack's house where his father tells him the giants are just a story. Meanwhile, Isabel's mother hints at their family's royal past linked to King Eric, encouraging her to be curious about their history and her future roles. But the story suggests a coming danger, the giants coming back, promising a fight that could endanger their kingdom and the legacy of King Eric's family. Jump ten years forward, and we meet Jack again, now an adult. His uncle sends him to the city with a simple job. Sell the horse and don't get distracted. Sounds easy, right? But not for Jack. As soon as he enters the lively city, he's drawn to a theater, showing a play about the famous King Eric and his fights with giants. In the audience, Jack's gaze meets that of a beautiful girl who notices him looking. Their moment ends quickly when a group of bullies start to hassle her after the show. Jack, feeling brave, tries to protect her but gets punched in the face. He pleads with the bullies to leave her alone, and just then, a royal guard intervenes, making the bullies say sorry. They realize the girl is Princess Isabel and bow down, leaving Jack very surprised. Meanwhile, Jack's day gets even worse when he discovers someone has stolen his cart somewhere else. Roderick and his friend Wick are scheming about Roderick's future marriage to the princess. They run into a monk but decide to let him go. Once alone, Roderick hurries to check on some valuable items, only to find the magic beans are missing, though the crown of King Eric is still there. Worried, Roderick orders the city gates closed and sends Wick on a mission to find the monk. At the same time, the monk, knowing he's being hunted, runs into Jack trying to sell his horse. Offering ten coins for the horse, Jack agrees to the deal until he sees the monk has no money. In a surprising turn, the monk gives him the beans as a promise for payment, saying they're special relics. A wise monk warns Jack to keep a special set of beans safe and dry. But in a blink, the monk swaps Jack's horse for these mysterious beans and dashes out of town. Jack's left, scratching his head when suddenly, Wick's gang is hot on the monk's trail, catching him before he can vanish. Back at the castle, Isabel, the princess, is saying sorry to Elmont, her protector, for giving him a hard time. At the same moment, Jack's getting an earful from his uncle. You're 18, Jack. It's time to grow up. His uncle scolds, upset about the horse for beans deal. Meanwhile, the king's lecturing Isabel about sneaking out. You're going to be queen one day, he reminds her, puzzled why she'd oppose marrying Roderick, a man she doesn't love and who's much older. Isabel stands her ground, insisting she's strong and independent, just like her late mother. Jack's uncle, furious, tosses the beans aside, threatening to sell off Jack's family heirlooms. Please, no! Jack pleads, but to no avail. Isabel pleads for her freedom to explore the kingdom, but her father fears losing her as he lost her mother. Despite her pleas, the king declares she must marry Roderick and remain in the palace. Disheartened, Isabel plans another escape that very night. In a dark twist, Wick and Roderick grill the captured monk about the beans, which, according to him, are steeped in dark magic and beyond control. Roderick, unmoved by the warning, silences the monk forever. Jack's sitting at home, feeling uneasy because his uncle hasn't come back and there's a big storm outside. Just then, Princess Isabel, lost and intrigued by the light from Jack's house, decides to knock on his door. Jack, surprised but hospitable, invites her in. They start chatting away, completely oblivious to the fact that the ground beneath the house is getting soaked, inching ever closer to a magic bean hidden there. 
As they dive into tales of books and daring escapades, Jack confesses he stood up for Isabel in a marketplace scuffle, all while pretending they don't recognize each other. Curious, Jack asks her what she's running from. Just seeking an adventure, she says. Jack, now on one knee, shows he knows exactly who she is, earning a thank you from Isabel for defending her honor. Right under them, unbeknownst to either, a bean begins to grow, setting the stage for what's next. Jack hands over his treasured book about giants, hoping it'll help Isabel find the adventure she craves. Suddenly, their world turns upside down as the house trembles and a gigantic beanstalk erupts, tearing the floors apart and soaring into the sky. Jack finds himself outside, while Isabel is trapped inside the rising house. In a brave attempt, Jack leaps towards the ascending house to rescue Isabel. Battling the climb, he finally makes it back to the house, only for Isabel to nearly send him plummeting while opening the door. Grabbing her hand, Jack slips but manages to hold on to her mother's bracelet, falling all the way down the beanstalk. Miraculously, Jack lands safely but knocks out cold. Come sunrise, the king himself awakens Jack, puzzled about his daughter's bracelet in Jack's possession. Recognized by Elmont from the marketplace incident, Jack is given the chance to explain. With both Jack and Roderick now on board, the quest to save Isabel, alongside the Guardians, begins. A group of men, including our hero Jack and the cunning Roderick, are scaling a gigantic beanstalk that pierces the sky. Roderick's acting shady, and Jack's getting curious. He asks Elmont, the seasoned guardian, what's waiting for them up top? Elmont's skeptical about the tales of giants and warns Jack that impressing the princess won't change his commoner status. Amid their ascent, Jack's luck nearly runs out when he slips. But he's swiftly rescued by the quick actions of Kron, another guardian. As they continue their perilous climb, the group dwindles down to just six, thanks to Roderick's sinister moves, all while Elmont remains in the dark about his true intentions. The morning reveals they've reached the Beanstalk's summit, with the princess nowhere in sight at Jack's house. They venture into the giant's realm, hoping to find her. The search intensifies as Roderick corners Jack, demanding the magic beans. Jack hands them over, keeping one hidden in his locket. Clues of Isabel's whereabouts begin to surface, leading them on her trail. Jack's discovery of a book he'd given Isabel confirms they're on the right path, but also suggests she's in danger. The rescue mission takes a dramatic turn when Elmont, Kron, and Jack stumble into a trap while attempting to capture a sheep, only to find themselves face to face with a real giant. A giant, unfazed by their presence, devours a sheep and soon detects Kron, despite a desperate escape attempt. Kron is caught. Elmont's brave effort to save him only results in both being captured. Jack, undeterred, stealthily follows the giant, determined to rescue his friends and uncover the fate awaiting them in this land of giants. This group finds themselves at a waterfall. The Guardian cleverly suggests Roderick take a break, using the moment to outsmart him and send him tumbling off the cliff. But the plot thickens when a giant unexpectedly snatches Wick making a meal out of him. Another giant looms, yet Roderick, seizing the moment, grabs a crown that commands the giant's respect, narrowly escaping danger. Meanwhile, Jack stealthily makes his way into the giant's city, just as Princess Isabel finds herself captive. The giant holding her demands answers, but she remains silent, even under the threat of her companions arriving. General Fallon, a two-headed giant, realizes Isabel's royal lineage and parades her before his troops as proof that humans have dared to return. The situation escalates when Kron and Elmont are also captured and brought before the giant leader. Kron's defiance leads to his grim fate, devoured by the giant. Jack, witnessing the chaos from a distance, must dodge the attention of other giants to reach his friends. Amidst this tension, Roderick makes a grand entrance wearing the crown, bending the giants to his will including General Fallon. While Elmont initially feels relief at Roderick's arrival, his hope turns to shock as Roderick claims kingship over the giants and commands them to prepare for an invasion of Earth. In a twist, Jack discovers a room filled with treasures plundered by the giants. He overhears Isabel pleading for her life and rushes to save her and Elmont from a grim fate in the kitchen. Despite the danger, Jack's quick thinking and bravery allow him to arm Elmont with a knife. A tense moment unfolds as the giant chef nearly ends Elmont's life, 
but Jack intervenes, saving him from the oven. The climax reaches a heart-stopping moment when Isabel is next in line to face the giant's blade. Jack, in a daring move, uses a cooking knife to defend her. As Elmont breaks free and Isabel finds a hiding spot, Jack finds himself in a perilous position on the giant's back. The giant, in a desperate attempt to rid itself of Jack, crashes into a wall, bringing an end to the immediate threat. Elmont can't hide his amazement when he learns Jack has slain a giant. With newfound respect, Jack suggests they have a way to escape. Down below, the king and his generals debate whether to cut down the towering beanstalk, pondering the risks of what might descend from above. Back in the giant's realm, Roderick commands his forces, preparing for their descent. Amidst this, Jack tends to Isabel's injury, while Elmont mourns a fallen comrade. Isabel blames herself for the chaos, but Jack offers a silver lining. Her ordeal could prevent Roderick's unchallenged rise to power. He envisions a future where Isabel's reign brings hope and change. Their path to escape leads them to a river and eventually to a sleeping giant guardian of the passage back to their world. Ingeniously, they decide to use a beehive to stir the giant from his slumber. The plan works a little too well, resulting in the giant's accidental plunge from the cliff. Despite the momentary victory, Elmont decides to stay behind, entrusting Jack with Isabel's safety and appointing him a guardian. As Jack and Isabel make their descent, the king, witnessing a giant's fall, makes the difficult decision to cut down the beanstalk, prioritizing his kingdom's safety over the uncertainty of his daughter's return. His determination prompts his generals to act, commencing the beanstalk's demolition. Meanwhile, Elmont confronts Roderick, leading to a fierce battle atop the beanstalk. The fight is intense, with Roderick momentarily gaining the upper hand until Elmont's resilience turns the tide. As the giants frantically attempt to rescue their would-be king, Roderick meets his end, leaving the crown, a symbol of his brief authority, behind. General Fallon claims it as his own, marking a new era for the giants. Down where the beanstalk towers, the men have managed to slice through part of its base. As they work, the entire structure begins to wobble and eventually starts to collapse. Up above, Jack and Isabel sense the movement, and Jack quickly tells Isabel to brace herself for what's coming. Elmont, showing incredible bravery, rides the falling stalk down, while General Fallon watches the destruction from afar. In a daring move, Jack finds a stem that he uses like a rope, swinging to safety with Isabel in tow. The fragment of the stalk Elmont is on crashes near the palace, causing destruction, but Elmont manages to leap to safety at the last second. Back on the ground, the king is overwhelmed with grief, fearing he's lost his daughter to the chaos. But then, a general arrives with Isabel, bringing relief and revelations about Roderick's fate. Jack, feeling his part is done, starts to leave, but is stopped by the king who expresses his gratitude. Isabel, donning armor, shares a heartfelt farewell with Jack, holding onto the book he gives her as a keepsake. Meanwhile, General Fallon discovers more magic beans. With a toss into the water, they sprout instantly, threatening a new bridge between the giant's realm and the human world. The giants waste no time, climbing and forcing the young stalks down to earth. Fallon leads the charge. Back on solid ground, Jack, upon finding his horse, witnesses the giant's descent. He races to alert the king. As he warns of the incoming threat, the giants loom over forcing everyone into a desperate retreat towards the city. The giants advance, overpowering the king's men in their wake. General Fallon targets the king, but their advance is hampered by the remains of the initial beanstalk. Meanwhile, Elmont springs into action, rallying the city's defenses from archers on the walls to vats of boiling oil prepared for the invaders. The giants, hot on Jack's heels, find themselves facing a fortified city braced for their arrival, with Elmont orchestrating a fiery welcome. As the king safely enters the city, he orders the drawbridge raised, narrowly allowing Jack to leap across in time. General Fallon, in pursuit, makes the jump as well, but meets his fiery demise when Elmont forces him into the scalding oil below. However, unbeknownst to them, Fallon survives underwater. With the city under siege, the giants employ a new tactic, launching a bell into the city and attaching hooks to the drawbridge in an attempt to breach the defenses. Amidst the chaos, the king entrusts Isabel with a critical mission to signal for help, 
by lighting a beacon in his chambers. He implores Jack to ensure her safety. Navigating through the hidden passages of the royal catacombs, Jack and Isabel encounter the resting place of King Eric before reaching the royal chamber. Their moment of respite is shattered when General Fallon bursts through the floor, sending them fleeing for their lives. The battle rages on outside with the city's defenders desperately fending off the giant's relentless assault. Amidst a hail of spears and the giant's counterattacks, the struggle intensifies, highlighting the ferocity of the conflict. In a heart-stopping moment, Fallon, using his heightened senses, discovers Jack and Isabel's hiding spot. In a daring attempt to save themselves, Jack confronts Fallon on a narrow staircase. The giant's immense strength seems to doom our heroes until Jack, in a last desperate act, feeds Fallon the remaining magic bean. The bean's rapid growth inside Fallon leads to his explosive demise, causing widespread destruction in the palace. As they stand amidst the aftermath, Jack and Isabel watch as the remains of the giants scatter around them. Notably, the giant's hand, clutching the crown, lands near Jack. In response to the unfolding chaos, the remaining giants lower the drawbridge, but the city's defenders quickly seal the gates, bracing for a final assault. The anticipation is palpable as the giants begin their advance, only to halt in astonishment as the beanstalk wreaks havoc on the palace. In a moment of unexpected surrender, the giants drop their weapons and kneel before the human army, witnessing Jack, now donned with the crown, and Isabel, united. The narrative fast-forwards to a serene scene where Jack recounts this tale of bravery and love to his children. They're naturally curious about the crown and the potential return of the giants, but Jack assures them it's kept in a secure place, with Isabel affirming their safety Jack weaves the story of the giants once more, as the scene shifts to reveal the crown's transformation into a symbol of power and continuity, resembling what is known as the Imperial State Crown today. This historical artifact now resides in Westminster Abbey, London, safeguarded and revered. As a tour guide enlightens a group of students about its legacy, this tale concludes here.